So what you're doing right now, what I'm doing right now, is just telling people the truth. And that starts to spread and more people understand. It's the same thing that when you first saw Bitcoin and you saw it as a store of value to protect yourself from this, but you might not have seen it become a currency because it didn't matter to you as much. Your, your key use case from it was to protect your purchasing power. Bitcoin is like this prism. You could find it through any different way. You could find it through an insight of it solves one of your problems. And then you start to ask yourself, okay, what problem do I care about that could be solved by manipulating pieces of paper? And you find there's no problem that could be solved. And so, so as this centralizes further and it gets worse, then it actually powers the innovation to be able to solve that problem because that's what we do as humans. After reaching its highest price in three weeks, Bitcoin has lately grabbed headlines once more, propelling growth in the cryptocurrency industry. The market is excited after this 5.8% increase, which ended up settling around $61,000. However, financial analyst Jeff Booth cautions that we could not be seeing the entire picture. According to Booth, Bitcoin can only reach its full potential if it is freed from the conventional fiat monetary system. He feels that we are promoting centralization and dependence on on currencies managed by organizations and governments by pricing Bitcoin and currency. Booth highlights that focusing on the currency price of Bitcoin restricts its potential in the long run as a decentralized asset. As an alternative, he supports Bitcoin's independent valuation in order to foster true decentralization and financial independence, particularly during price spikes. Booth argues that before Bitcoin can be used as an actual method of exchange, it has to prove itself as a store of value. Follow along until the very end to learn more about Jeff Booth's outlook for Bitcoin. For more information about cryptocurrencies and finance, don't forget to like, subscribe, and enable notifications. I hope you enjoy the video. I categorically believe that we should not be pricing the new system and the fiat system. Um, and anything that does that on top of it is it, 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 you're reinforcing I'm trading Bitcoin for a piece of paper to price the world. Yeah, so anything that's doing that is reinforcing a centralization of a, of a function against a kind of US dollar backed system, which would centralize Bitcoin in time. So I categorically believe that this needs, if Bitcoin is not a medium of exchange, it is not a sufficient store of value. We already have all of the technology to take this to, in the protocol stack to take this to 8 billion people right now. It's a mental game and it's mental game because most people are priced. Most people think prices should go up in the world and they are reinforcing a system where prices go up. And the only reason prices go up is because money is manipulated. So if you're doing that in Bitcoin, then you were part of the, the thing that's driving the centralization. And if you're doing that, then what's uh, then what will happen on top of Bitcoin is it will get centralized at layer two, um, and you'll be working in a fiat instrument on top of Bitcoin, thinking it's going up, and it'll mute, it'll 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 limit the potential of Bitcoin, because all that would happen is because remember these systems are totally incongruent together. In one system, the free market system, prices fall to uh, to the marginal cost of production. So we've talked about this extensively. So in the free market, because we use things that give us more value, prices fall, deflation. That is the world you should live in. And the only way that that is, is and, but you, but so that, so prices don't rise not naturally. They rise unnaturally because the money is being manipulated. So if you're pricing from Bitcoin, you'll see all other things are falling exactly like I said. If you're taking Bitcoin into your piece of paper to be able to price everything, then it looks like prices are still rising. And I would, and I would, I would uh, venture to say most people, even in Bitcoin, don't quite get what we just talked about there. And so the, these systems are completely opposites. So they cannot coexist together. One, one system needs to make prices rise. One system allows prices to fall through the free, free market. So as a, as a derivative of that, then, then the system that makes prices rise has to concentrate and steal more from you over time. So if you're, a, and, and, it has to, and, and it has to convince you to stay in it. And over time as that central, it, so it's a centralizing force, right? 
and that centralizing force is a bigger government force and and, and all of these things that are consequences of not allowing a free market prices to fall are consequences that uh, that get worse so if you're inside that system then that system um has to it either blows up completely and fa and fails or it attacks bitcoin from layer two what would an attack look like from layer two it would look like first concentrated in etfs and and other and and other things in derivatives and because most of the people in the world have seen wealth not real wealth accumulating but the wealth coming from extraction accumulating from financialization of assets they would look to financialize bitcoin too and you would see bitcoin as a store value that you could financialize and play games and derivative games on top of that is a centralizing force it has to be because it's not the free market but we can expect if you're pricing from bitcoin going up most people would get caught into that because they would think they're winning because they would be re winning relative to other people that don't hold bitcoin well, they're still losing and contributing to that. Jeff Booth highlights how crucial it is to comprehend Bitcoin's actual potential. He says that although at first people only considered Bitcoin to be a store of wealth, much like Argentinians saw the US currency as a means of preserving purchasing power, Bitcoin is much more than that. Booth claims that Bitcoin is the best store of value and has the ability to completely transform the world economy. Booth emphasizes how Bitcoin signals a change from the extractive economic system we currently have to a decentralized one that could support the world's 8 billion people. He thinks that problems that centralized systems are unable to resolve are addressed by Bitcoin. Since centralization has always resulted in control and vulnerability, Bitcoin's decentralized structure provides security free of manipulation. Booth establishes a high bar for Bitcoin, recognizing that although many people have long understood the dangers of centralization, Bitcoin offers a special remedy. Let's examine more of Booth's ideas and delve deeper into his observations from the interview. Remember to subscribe, like, and set on notifications for more insightful posts. Let's hear his following words. So what you're doing right now, what I'm doing right now, is just telling people the truth. And that starts to spread and more people understand. It's the same thing that when you first saw Bitcoin and you saw it as a store of value to protect yourself from this, but you might not have seen it become a currency because it didn't matter to you as much. Your, your key use case from it was to protect your purchasing power. And then as you, and, and by the way, the key use case for US dollar in Argentina is to protect your uh, purchasing power. So it, it's understandable that a whole bunch of people in Argentina would see US dollar protecting the purchasing power relative to, uh, to the Argentina peso. Um, the now relative to US dollar, Bitcoin is a better <laughs> uh, uh, store of value. And then, and so each person inside of this, this thing is making their initial determination of what Bitcoin is and what you just described as number go up is might be one of the first things they see while reinforcing the existing system. And then through more and more time and understanding what this really is and how this is a paradigm change that we've never seen in the world, that there is no one alive today um, no one alive ever that has ever seen a protocol <laughs> that could create the future where we're 8 billion per people in service of 8 billion people. We've always lived in an extractive economy, so that's where how our minds are wired. Um, we think it has to look like that, whereas this imposes a new discipline. So that would be, that. I would just say, that's a hard thing for people to understand, and they start, they start to see Bitcoin through the thing that helps them and then as they go deeper and deeper and deeper, they start to see how it touches everything and it helps everyone. Bitcoin is like this prism. You could find it through any different way. You could find it through an insight of it solves one of your problems. And then you start to ask yourself, okay, what problem do I care about that could be solved by manipulating pieces of paper? And you find there's no problem that could be solved. And so, so as this centralizes further and it gets worse, then it actually powers the innovation to be able to solve that problem 
because that's what we do as humans. According to Booth, Bitcoin functions similarly to a prism. While first drawn to it by users for its ability to fix a specific issue, further investigation reveals that it affects every part of the financial system and provides answers to several issues brought on by centralized manipulative currencies. Booth's idea of Bitcoin is a transformative force that goes beyond its initial perception as just a store of value. It should encourage viewers to think deeper about Bitcoin's potential to reshape not only their personal finances, but the entire global economy. Also, Jeff Booth explains, Bitcoin is much more than just a store of value or a way to protect purchasing power. It's a decentralized protocol that challenges the traditional, extractive economic systems we've always known. As more people learn about Bitcoin, they begin to see how it solves not just their immediate financial concerns, but also addresses global issues caused by centralization and manipulation of money. Bitcoin is a tool that could serve all 8 billion people, creating a future that's more secure, fair, and free from control by centralized institutions. If you're curious about how Bitcoin can change not just your financial world, but the entire economic system, continue your investigation and understanding of of its possibilities. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more insights from Jeff Booth and other leading voices in cryptocurrency and finance.